Hey everybody, this is the SAC here with SAC Time. Uh, over the week of 5.30 in which two Virtual Console games were re-released. Uh, we have Mega Man X and Super... Or no, regular, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, actually. And we're gonna go ahead and do just, uh, Mega Man X for the time being. And, uh, I'm excited to, to pull this one up. I just downloaded them, uh, under the sale. Pick up the Mega Man X for my upgrade fee to get half off the Ghosts and Goblins, which I did not have prior. So, uh, this is what we have going on. We're going to go ahead and uh, start up some Mega Man X. And I'm not using the gamepad right now, as mine is charging, and I want to use the uh, the Pro Controller. So let's go ahead and start this up and see how the Wii U Virtual Console version fares. I'm sorry you didn't get to watch me download the games this time. I know that's your favorite part, but i just got to make do with the fact that it's already downloaded. So, sorry. I'm really excited to use the Wii U Pro Controller as I find this thing to be tremendously comfortable. Um, and I don't even know if I'm going to modify the buttons because L and R I use so seldom other than, you know, switching weapons and such. But uh, I don't even think we're going to get that far to do that. Maybe we'll play like through one intro stage and then the boss. Okay, so Mega Man X, kind of cool. Uh, this is a great game. Uh, I believe one of the best Super Nintendo games, in all honesty. I'm going to go to the option mode real quick. I like that it's a mode um, where you can customize your buttons, go to stereo, check out some music and stuff. But this is a solid game. This is absolutely one of my favorite games of all time. And I could go back through this all the time. In fact, I think I did a playthrough online about a month ago. I just played through the uh, the PSP version about two weeks ago on a road trip. So this is this is one that I can consistently do anytime. And we're going to leave the buttons by default and uh, go ahead and, uh, and start this up. Now the Virtual Console version, of course, uh, looks tremendously sharp. This controller I find to be absolutely terrific for uh, for classic uh, games like this, for anything 2D. Um, I just use the D-pad, which I'm sure most people will default to, and that's that's totally fine. But uh, the analog stick itself actually feels pretty nice, um, and after years and years of playing Xbox Live Arcade games with uh, with a really terrible D-pad on that controller, I just got used to using the analog stick for everything anyway, to the point where uh, they're both pretty interchangeable at this point, and uh, there's there's no real preference. I think I guess D-pad, um, just because it's the most familiar, but uh, Mega Man X, this is, this is truly a remarkable game. Let's go ahead and start off talking about what makes this game so good, and if you haven't seen the Ego Raptor video uh, about his uh, the, the sequelitis regarding um, X and just what makes this game so remarkable. I'd highly recommend doing that. This is mostly for virtual console impressions rather than anything else really, of course, but uh, if, if you wanted reasons as to why it's a terrific game, that's that's going to be your best bet. Oh, there we go. And uh, phenomenal control, a crazy amount of attention to detail, uh, absolutely terrific sprite work. It's just... This game is the full package. One of my, my favorite details is, look, uh, the color of the um, the ground that we're on right now is sort of like a, a medium green. Go over here and it starts to brighten up because we're underneath these street lights. It's, it's details like that that really go a tremendously long way with me. Um, and even that right there where you can stand on the ledge and it crumbles off, obviously that's just the way this little section works, but I've always found it interesting to see that... Uh, this particular spot right here, there's one coming up after that as well. If you jump on the far one, boom, both of them fall, but in slightly uh, slightly out of order, which which I kind of like. Um, and I used to find that to be just a super cool little detail as well. Great backgrounds, terrific music. And one thing I noticed about the, uh, the Mega Man X games that I didn't dislike later on, the sprite work just got better and better, uh, especially on the PlayStation. Um, but the music itself wasn't quite as catchy or, or melodic, and it wasn't bad per se, but the Super Nintendo ones hold a special spot in my heart. Uh, the controller, the music, the, the way that these games were put together just really, really does it for me. Okay, so our first experience in the game is we're going to meet up with with a story uh, character, which is kind of cool because you have to die on him, essentially. Let's let this, this driver come out, destroy his car. Shatters them in pieces. There's like a payphone back there. All right, and then Vile shows up, or Vava, 
which I believe is just a Hispanic slang word for vagina. <laughs> Growing up in, in New Mexico where I live, uh, I think that <laughs> that's what I've heard it as more often. Um, Alright, so you just let him uh, wail on you for a bit. And what's cool is you could actually... Uh, I was just going to try to do it, and I totally didn't. You can sit in the corner and just shoot him indefinitely, jumping over his fist and dodging his little electric sphere, um, and you can do infinite damage, but he won't ever die, because he can't. So, story sequence ensues, and I think the first time I saw this game, I was absolutely blown away. And yeah, we'll go uh, through a full stage so I can show you just a couple more details on what makes this game so remarkable, and why, if you haven't had a chance to pick this up yet, there is plenty of reason to. X, you shouldn't expect to defeat him. He's designed to be a war machine. Uh, in the subsequent games, on the Super Nintendo anyway, they started calling him Mega Man X instead of just X, and I found it to be a little little weird as if you're always referring to like your friend as his full name right in front of you, and we're skipping the story sequences. But uh, Terrific control, a lot of cute little throwbacks to the original Mega Man style games with like the Metals, or Metaru, or whatever you want to pronounce it, uh, as your little password uh, assistants. Okay, so there's something that this game does that is absolutely the most remarkable thing that very few games have ever even thought about. So the attention to detail, you have a quick little snippet of each character's level right down here when you select their stage, or select the actual character icon. Um, excellent little portraits, the different layout than classic Mega Man games, but say we go to... Uh, we're on stage right now. Say we go to map, it will tell you exactly where on the map this uh, all this stuff uh, sort of lays and uh, the the most remarkable part about this is when you beat a stage in most cases it will actually affect another stage in the game in some way or another um, you can also check out the specs for each of the bosses just cuz there's no no good reason but it's uh, it's cool it's details like this that really do a good job of making this a remarkable experience Okay, so we're going to start with a uh, Chill Penguin, because he has one of the, the best, most vital upgrades in the game. Um, in fact, I think it's the only one that's fully mandatory, because you basically have to get this playing through his level, unless there's some glitch I don't know about. And comments are welcome, so we can decipher if those are actually something that we need or not. Okay... I'm trying to think of something to say right now, and there's there's nothing. I've got no words. I'm too I'm too enthralled in in the the stages, the backgrounds, the the trees that have been destroyed with with robotic elements sticking out. Um, bats that uh, have a sort of a similar design from Woodman stage. Well, I guess they're not quite as cutesy. They're a little more disgusting. Uh, from Mega Man 2, make a, an appearance. And this game feels like a very proper evolution of Mega Man in that his, his movement is faster, it's more streamlined, uh, he can now wall jump, which you saw on the previous level, um, slide down walls, you can charge up your Mega Buster from the get-go, there's actually even a third uh, uh, level to that, which is kind of cool, uh, because you can end up getting a, a supercharged Mega Buster before the official story sequence, just with some, some tricky platforming. All right, so the first of mini capsules, four, I suppose, and uh, Doctor Doctor Light from the classic Mega Man series comes down and says, "X, I gave you the ability to choose your own path in life," and that's the only thing he says. We're gonna skip the rest. Basically, he's he's reiterating to X that he was created as as a, a new savior, as a as one one final hope. You know, the original Mega Man model was not powerful enough, but Doctor Light was the only one who could. Um, create a robot with the proper copy ability, and so he instilled that into X as well. So this is, uh, this is what makes Mega Man so unique, and there you go, you have a new sprite aesthetic, which adds boots onto Mega Man and allows him to do a dash, or X, I suppose. Uh, Mega Man X, his full name. Uh, what's really cool about the thought of this is that there are, are several combinations you can get. Uh, eventually you can upgrade your, your chest, your arms, your legs, and your head, but you could also get these uh, things out of order, meaning they had to create several different sprite sets with all these different variations depending on what order you wanted to do some of these things in. So it's kind of cool to think that it's, again, those kinds of details that the game allows for should you decide to to, to go for it. Um, and now we can dash. You can either double tap the button or uh, left or right, or we can hit the A button. 
and uh, sort of spasm out, but use that in tandem. If you hold the A button when you're, um, actually I think you press them both, you can dash jump off a wall, which comes in very handy for doing some, some tricks a little bit later. There's a secret up there we can't get yet, but let's see. Gonna make our way through this level, and maybe I should have shown you something for basis of comparison first, but when you beat this level, it actually freezes the flame mammoth level, so everything becomes uh, icy, and it allows you access to some stuff that you couldn't get normally with just a magma covered floor. So let's uh, let's make our way to the, the the chill penguin himself. Man, I just want to do a full playthrough of this. Maybe I'll have to do that at some point, like I did with the original Mega Man. Okay, whatever the case. Um, bosses also did something cool in this game where they would react to uh, the elements you'd hit them with. Not every boss would do it, mind you. Um, oh my god. But uh, most of the bosses would do something. If you uh, hit uh, Chill Penguin with um, the Flame Mammoth, like a uh, flamethrower cannon, he would uh, he would set on fire, much like when when Dalsimer and Bison would hit you with the flaming attack in Street Fighter, and it was kind of a cool little detail. Um, Spark Mandrill actually like freezes and becomes sort of icy when when you shoot him with the Chill Penguin weapon. Let's see, I don't think Storm Eagle actually does much, but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of the enemies react appropriately to to the weapons that are meant to destroy them. And uh, this is the X game I, I absolutely played the most. I liked, uh, I liked 2 and 3 quite a bit, didn't have nearly as much exposure to them, but they're terrific games and hopefully those will come to the virtual console soon too. Give people a chance to see what's going on with, uh, with the whole series. So, okay. That's kind of cool. Uh, we killed him, and uh, let's, let's think of some other uh, some other cool elements of the game that alter things. When you're going through the Storm Eagle stage, um, I should just save this for a full playthrough. When you're going through the Storm Eagle stage, you're up on like this huge airship that's floating through the sky, and when you kill Storm Eagle, you'll notice the background starts to uh, react as if you're falling at like crazy speeds, and you end up crashing into the Spark Mandrill area, which destroys the power, and it it changes even like the mini-boss in the level, who no longer has any electric ability, the lights are flickering, there's a gigantic uh, wreck of a spaceship. Uh, it's in the background of the PSP version, I don't remember if it's in the, uh, uh, the Super Nintendo one here. Um, but just stuff like that makes a huge world of difference in terms of cool details. So, anyway, um, we'll just go to Flame Mammoth stage real quick and you can see that Instead of being like some sort of cool like magma factory, it's now an icy wasteland, and I'm not sure exactly what the reasoning for that is. A, a penguin explodes and his guts freeze this facility or something, but um, now we can actually hang out down here, whereas before it was just uh, an area where you couldn't traverse at all. So, uh, pretty handy, then you can just sit here and dash your way through pretty much the entire level. Um, oh, you know what? Let me see if we can make our way up here. Because you can, you can, with the boots, ah. You can actually, you can hit that. And we'll, I don't know if I can actually do it if I'm coordinated enough at this point. Oh, come on. Unless they change something in like a later build where this wasn't possible. Uh, in an original version, um, I don't have the helmet, so that doesn't help. In fact, if I had the helmet, I could burst my way up immediately right there, so perhaps, actually, that would be the case anyway. So never mind, I'm just being foolish. Uh, so whatever you do, um, if you're going to attempt to get that early, go get the helmet from Storm Eagle stage, and then you're good. Get a heart tank, and uh, each boss stage has one of these in it as well. There's uh, miners that look like returning characters from Gutsman stage. There's uh, an E-tank up here we can grab. Oh, just take an axe to the face. Oh, again, two axes to the face. Okay, and now we can kick through this. Yeah. Grab an E tank. Okay, cool. And uh, most people know about like a lot of the other tricks that this game houses. Uh, the ability to get the uh, Hadouken from Street Fighter, uh, which can kill anything in one hit. 
the only caveat being that you need to have full life. So if you got a couple E-Tanks and you're, you're proficient at not getting hit by things, you can blaze through the end of this game extremely quickly without having to worry about bosses at all. So, all right, we're just going to play through the rest of the stage just because we've come this far. And... Alright, we're just gonna skip through that, get hit by some acid, looks like a throwback to Mega Man 2. Just jump into his mace. Okay. And Flame Mammoth, I think, is actually pretty easy with just the Mega Buster. Given that you can charge the Mega Buster, uh, it makes a lot of the fights pretty doable with simply this weapon. Oh, there's the first flame on the stage. This is a little space heater in the background. Okay. Cool. Excellent sprite work from Capcom as always. They really aced that on the Super Nintendo. They've always been good at making good looking sprites. Oh, let me uh, fall real quick. He shoots out some sick acid that... Oh, the acid kept going the other way even though the conveyor belt changed. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm uh, really good at talking and playing at the same time, so... I'll do that and uh, die for you. I don't think I'll die. And this stuff just sort of holds you in place, but it's it's pretty easy to avoid. So this boss fight isn't too too bad. Oh, one more. Okay, sweet, dead. All right, and. Um, this is basically Mega Man X in a nutshell. Phenomenal platforming, absolutely terrific control. It looks great on the Wii U, it looks sharp on the gamepad. The uh, controller, Classic Controller Pro, feels absolutely terrific uh, with this game. This is this thing was really made for 2D, and I know people had a problem with the layout of the uh, the thumbsticks. Um, it takes almost no getting used to. It's it's immediately gratifying and it works extremely well. So however you get a chance to play this game, you know if you're upgrading for a dollar fifty, you know how good it is. If you're buying it for the first time for eight bucks or whatever, it's what's worth it. This is this is truly uh, the pinnacle of like um, what a Mega Man game actually could and should represent. Uh, great control, great details, great bosses, a, a couple really cool secrets, phenomenal music. There's very little bad I can say about this game. In fact, offhand, there's truly nothing I can think of. I have no personal complaints. So, 8.50 on the eShop, and uh, right now they're running a deal through next week, where if you pick up this game, you get Ghouls and Ghosts, or excuse me, Ghosts and Goblins for 50% off, or vice versa. So one way or the other, uh, it's worth your time to go grab uh, one of, if not both, of these games. All right. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Sack Time, and uh, we'll be back with some Ghosts and Goblins. Thank you.